Hello, and welcome to the HDI Propagation Series. My name's Harley Smith, and today I'm going to introduce you to water quality management and the power of pH. At the root zone, plants prefer a slightly acidic solution, somewhere between 5.8 and 6.4. So for hydroponics, 6.0 is an excellent target pH. It only takes a little acid to lower the pH of water. According to the directions on the bottle, about one teaspoon of pH lower per gallon should lower the pH by one full increment. In other words, if the pH is eight, one teaspoon per gallon should lower the pH to seven. But that's only an estimate. Some water sources are more buffered against changes in pH than others, so it takes more acid to reach your target. Let me demonstrate. Here we have three water sources. The first is RO water, water that's been passed through a reverse osmosis filter to remove all the minerals. The next picture is city water, taken straight from the tap from good old Lansing, Michigan. And the last picture is well water, taken from the hose in my own backyard. Every water source has a different buffering capacity. The higher the buffering capacity, the greater the resistance to changes in pH. RO water has no buffering capacity. City water has moderate buffering capacity. And well water has high buffering capacity. First, let's check the pH of each pitcher with a pH meter. The pH of the RO water is 7.0. The pH of the city water is 9.0. That's very alkaline. And the pH of the well water, 7.2. Most fertilizers are slightly acidic. So let's add three teaspoons of a growth formula to each container and check the pH again. What I have is a children's medicine dropper. The top line on this is exactly one teaspoon. So I'll add three teaspoons each. One. Two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. The pH of the RO water was 7.0. Now it's 5.1. The pH of the city water was 9.0. Now it's all the way down to 6.6. .6. And the pH of the well water, that was 7.2. Now it is 6.8. What is the ideal pH range for plant growth? 5.8 to 6.4. So I actually have to raise the pH of the RO water and lower the pH of the well water and the city water. I'll add just one drop at a time until we hit our target of 6.0. Start with the RO water. I'll add pH raise, which is a solution of potassium hydroxide. I'll start with five drops. Then add a couple more drops. Okay, we hit our target. Let's do the same thing with the city water, but this time we'll use pH lower. Five drops, 10 drops. Okay, we're there. Finally, let's adjust the pH of the well water. Well water is loaded with calcium carbonate, a strong buffer, so it will stubbornly resist changes to pH. 10 drops, 20 drops, 40, 60, 70, 80, 80 drops, and it's barely to target. Let's summarize our results. RO water has neutral pH, but no buffering capacity. So just adding fertilizer caused the pH to crash. We actually had to add pH raise to bring it to target. The city water had very high pH, but only moderate buffering capacity. So it took only a small amount of pH lower to bring it to target. The well water was only slightly basic, but it had a very high buffering capacity. It took eight times as much pH lower to bring it to target compared to city water. If you use RO water, 
I'd recommend mixing it 50-50 with your regular water to add a little buffering capacity to it. If you have clean city water, just use a standard nutrient formula that is nicely pH buffered. Ionic Grow and Ionic Bloom are excellent choices. If you have well water like mine, use a hard water nutrient. It's formulated to compensate for the minerals in the hard water, and it's more acidic than a standard nutrient. I've used hard water ionic for years, and it really helps. That's all for now. If you want more advice on water quality management, contact us at HD or watch the rest of this video series. We're always glad to help. Until next time, good luck and good growing.